Hey, what's up guys, it's Darkroom Duels, and today we're gonna to be doing an Armored Samurai Ben K test hand video. So I'm really excited for this one because it's actually a Patreon request, deck profile, and test hand for Izzy this month, and I'm really excited for this one because I've actually never built an Armored Samurai Ben K build, and I think it's really interesting because it reminds me a lot of Noble Knights, Hence the actual Azold in the extra deck. It actually works really well for the way that the deck actually works, which is really interesting. To be able to just turbo out your Ben K, get a bunch of equip spells onto it, and then OTK your opponent with multiple attacks from your Armored Samurai. So, with that further ado, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell there so you can come part of the notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below where we have all those awesome words you guys like getting your name scripts for every single video, getting a signed card to the mail, or even getting to request a deck profile every single month you're a patron along with test hands and definitely show Izzy some love down in the comments down below for actually requesting this video. And for this video, we're actually gonna need some dice because I do recommend that if you are going to be playing a Ben K build, it is very important to have dice because you're going to be using Power of the Guardian. So without further ado, let's get straight on into this. So let's go ahead and shuffle the deck up a little bit. And basically what you're trying to do is, is it doesn't really matter which equip spells you get equipped to your Ben K. As long as you get a couple of equip spells, they can boost the attack up a considerable amount to be able to OTK your opponent. This deck has a lot of potential to be able to do one turn OTK, which is really insane about the deck. I will mention to you guys that the deck does a lot better going going second opposed to going first. It can go first, and I have done a lot of play testing with this deck going first, but it's not in its strong suit, I will say. It's like playing Chaos Max going first. If they out the Chaos Max, it's pretty much game over. Kind of the same thing with your Ben K, but that's just the way that the deck works with Ben K. I'm going to show you guys some going first hands, and I'm going to show you the potential of going second, and we're going to talk about that as we go. But let's go ahead and pile shuffle the deck and see what we can get for this particular test hand. So, like I said though, definitely give Izzy some love down in the comments because Izzy did request this one. And this is a really interesting deck. I've had a lot of fun building it. It's very interesting. And if you have a bunch of equip spells laying around, you can actually mix Noble Knight cards into the deck and a lot of insane stuff. So, let's get straight on into the test hands and see what we can pull off. So, let's go ahead and cut the deck and see what we can do. So we're gonna go ahead and draw, and we're gonna draw directly into a Heritage of the Chalice, Aqua Dolphin, a copy of Heritage of the Chalice, United We Stand, and a Psychic Blade. So this is not the greatest hand in the entire world because you're gonna kinda of have to rely on that Aqua Dolphin a little bit. But again, you're more concerned about going second. If we do draw for turn, you're gonna draw into a Sub Knight, which is why I mentioned before that the deck does a lot better going second opposed to going first because that six card can actually be very, very crucial for your play. So we're gonna treat this like a going second hand because like I said you're only going to be able to OTK by attack on the second turn and that's the way that the deck works is OTKing by attack so we're going to go ahead and normal summon out the copy of Sub Knight Sub Knight's effect is going to activate and you're going to go ahead and equip onto the Sub Knight a copy of say let's see where is it this is the main combo of the deck you're either going to use this with Neospatian Connector and a copy of Aqua Dolphin special summoning to your field or you're going to use this with a copy of the Sub Knight and Squeak Knight combo where you're going to be able to equip the copy of your Squeak Knight to your Sub Knight and then immediately special summon it to your side of the field which gives you an additional monster we then can activate our copy of Heritage of the Chalice which will get us a search out of the deck you can do that as well to be able to grab out of the deck a copy of say hmm Let's go ahead and grab a copy of Gallatin. Uh, no, let's grab... No, I know what I'm going to grab. I'm going to grab, grab Clarent. If you grab the Clarent, it's going to let you attack directly, and you can OTK your opponent essentially on the first turn, which is really, really helpful. So... We're going to go ahead and shuffle the deck up, and then once we go ahead and shuffle the deck up, this is going to go to our hand, and you're going to go ahead and link summon it into a copy of Azold. Now, Azold is the very important playmaker of the entire deck, because the Azold is going to send your equip spells to the graveyard to be able to get your copy of your... Ben K on your side of the field. So we're going to go ahead and send a copy of Power of the Guardians. You're always going to send a copy of Cursed Bamboo Sword, and you're always going to send a copy of Divine Sword Phoenix Blade. Those are extremely powerful cards to send to the graveyard just to get you additional plays in the deck. Now, usually I'll just pick a random other one, like a copy of Durandal. Durandal is not the greatest if you don't draw into it because I just don't really need it. So I'm going to go ahead and send it to the graveyard and get rid of it. So we're going to go ahead and send these to the graveyard, these four, and I'm going to go ahead and special summon out this now don't forget with your copy 
of your uh, Azold, you also get a search from the deck just to help thin the deck. So I usually grab my red layer if I haven't already gotten it with my super or with my um, Durandal. Uh, that's pretty important for the deck too. Just to go ahead and have an additional card in your hand. Now, your effect of your your effect of your Curse Bamboo Sword will go off and you'll be able to search the deck. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a copy of Bamboo Sword because it's going to give me an additional attack. And if I draw in any Golden Bamboo Swords, if my opponent lasts that long, I'm going to go ahead and OTK them if I get more Quip Spells. So now that we have this insane hand that you've drawn into four Quip Spells that you can go into, unfortunately we did draw into the copy of Heritage and a copy of Neospatial and Aqua Dolphin. These are kind of bricks in our hand, but you do have all these other cards that are going to help you out that can OTK your opponent. So we're going to go ahead and set these cards to the side and go ahead and start equipping and talking about those. So the Bamboo Sword's not going to do anything except give you an additional attack. So it can attack twice now. We're going to equip the Clarent, which we can play 500 life points to be able to attack directly, but it also gives us an additional attack. Now, the Psychic Blade is where it starts getting big. The Psychic Blade, you can pay 2,000 life points and increase this card's attack points by an additional 2,000, which is a really good effect to increase it to 2,500. Then the United We Stand on top of that is going to increase it by an additional 16, boosting it all the way up to 4,200, which is really big with five attacks. So you can then inflict a lot of damage all to your opponent all at once, which is just ridiculously good. It's sitting at 25, and then the 16 on top of that is 41. So you can do 41. Essentially, you can attack your opponent with 41 directly because of the Clarent, essentially around five times if they have a lot of life points, which is around 20,000 400 20,500 damage which is a lot of damage to inflict your opponent so that's really insane and the reason i say keep dice around is because you can keep up with the amount of attacks or when you get power of the guardians it's really important to have the dice around you still have bonus plays and if you notice guys we went a lot of pluses here as well because you started with six cards and you ended up with one two three four five six seven eight nine cards so you essentially went plus three with this hand which is really really good and if we would have drawn into two bricks with these two cards which you have to play in the deck anyways if you would have say changed out the Neospatial Aqua Dolphin for a copy of our Golden Bamboo Sword, just for example, you would have gotten an additional two draws, which would have been a Gallatin and a Mage Power, which would have boosted this up even more, and you could have not equipped the Golden Bamboo, or you would have had to equip the Golden Bamboo Sword, but you still could have OTK'd your opponent with this field, which is absolutely busted. So, Let's go ahead and see uh, what else we can do with this particular deck. Because it's pretty insane. Like, the, the game, is this this is a pretty insane build for Ben K. Because the deck just pops off like that, as you can see. But like I said, I showed you guys going first. It's not the greatest going first. It's just not. That's not what the deck does. It goes off second and OTKs your opponent. Which is the important thing to keep in mind as you're playing this deck. It's an all-in kind of glass cannon kind of build. And that's what it does. It, it doesn't have defense power. Any any Ben K build that you find, it's never had that defensive power. That's just not what the deck does. It's not a control based deck. It's supposed to punch through. And there's a lot of places that when you play against it, it's going to be really tough for your opponent to negate something. The only thing that they can really stop is the Azold from the search and then the special summon. And if they don't stop that, it's pretty much game over. Because at that point, you're just going to start equipping the equip spells and it's going to get really ugly. And I also forgot to mention you could have got the Divine Sword Phoenix Blade as well, which would have boosted it up to 44, and then it would have given it an additional 6th attack, which would have given, given it basically like 25,000 damage, which would have been insanely good. Like, it could have it could have essentially ended a double duel. So let's go ahead and see what we can do for the next one. We're going to draw into another Heritage, a copy of Neospatial Connector, Pot of Extravagance, Golden Bamboo Sword, and a Pot of Extravagance. See, that sometimes happens when you play three ofs in this deck. You do draw into multiples, which is fine. It's not that big of a deal. But we don't have as many equip spells as I would feel comfortable with, but we have the Pot of Extravagance to kind of help us out. But you kind of got to be careful with the Pot of Extravagance. You can change it out for Desires or Pot of Prosperities. It's totally up to you. I like the Extravagance because it gives me additional equip spells, which is why I play it. So, we're going to go ahead and you're going to have to activate the Extravagance right off the bat because it has to be activated at the beginning of your main phase one so we're going to go ahead and shuffle in the extra deck and make sure that we don't get in the zold because that would super suck so we're going to go ahead and cut it let's see right there and we're going to go three and then six and if we hit in a zold we're going to be in a very bad position and we hit all three as which we didn't we only hit one so we're totally fine it's not that big of a deal 
We're going to go ahead and draw two off the top of the deck, which is another Heritage and a United We Stand. We are okay at this position because we can normal summon out the Neospatian Connector and use the Neospatian Connector's effect, and then immediately go ahead and dig into the deck and grab a copy of, or excuse me, that would stay on the field. We would grab a copy of Aqua Dolphin because Aqua Dolphin is the next play that you're going to want to go for. Once you grab the copy of Aqua Dolphin, you can then use your copy of Neospatian Connector and the Aqua Dolphin to send them to the graveyard and link out a copy of Azold. Now, once you summon out that copy of Azold, you're going to kind of do the same thing where you're going to send your Bamboo Sword, but keep in mind you can't draw with the copy of the Extravagant, so that's the only downside, is your Cursed Bamboo Sword is going to get your card to hand, but you're not going to be able to draw with Golden until the next turn, which is fine because we're going first. You can't OTK anyway, so it's not that deep. So we're going to go ahead and send to Graveyard the Cursed, the Divine Phoenix Blade, the copy of... Power of the Guardians. Actually, I would probably keep the Power of the Guardians because I really do want to see that. Um, maybe a copy of... I don't know. It really doesn't super matter. Galatin, maybe. Galatin would probably be getting... Uh, I'd keep the Galatin because I can boost it up. So you kind of got to pick and choose where you want to go with this. I usually just get rid of the Durandal and I get rid of like a Mage Power. Like that. That's probably the safest bet right there is to get rid of those. Now, don't forget about your Azold's effect to get the search as well, which I always grab the opposite. If I have connector, I grab Aqua Dolphin. If I have Aqua Dolphin, or if I, excuse me, if I have connector and I use connector Aqua Dolphin, then I'll grab off the Azold, maybe a Sub Knight, and grab it in my hand, unless I have the opposite brick, like a Squeak Knight or Aqua Dolphin in hand, then I won't grab the opposite and I'll go for red layer like you saw in the first test hand. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the copy of Sub Knight. So once we grab the copy of Sub Knight, we have Squeak Knight in deck, so we're still okay. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and shuffle. Uh, and we're gonna grab Bing K. Don't forget to grab Bing K. That's pretty important too. Uh, grab the Bing K, put it on your side of the field. I would probably put it in defense mode because you're not gonna wanna OTK going first. Um, and you're going to go ahead and send those four to the graveyard. And then we're going to go ahead and grab as well out of the deck. We're going to grab a copy of the golden bamboo sword or not the golden bamboo sword, but a broken bamboo sword off the copy of cursed because cursed touched the graveyard. So now once you have this particular hand, you have a lot of different plays. I would go ahead and heritage so you can heritage the following turn. Grab your copy of Clarence so you can OTK through just about anything. It can't attack directly on the first turn. But this is, again, this is a going first hand. You're trying to set up a little bit of a defense to hope you don't get OTK'd. You can equip a bunch of your cards to it, but you run the risk of Minkay going out. So... We're going to go ahead and set a card and pass once you set your copy of Heritage, just to kind of bait your opponent. You're going to go ahead and pass, and let's just say that they destroy your field. Okay, that's totally fine. We're going to go ahead and draw for turn, and we're going to draw into another Bamboo Sword. But now that we have double Bamboo Sword, I don't want an Extravagance. I really don't. So we're going to go ahead and Normal Summon out the copy of Sub Knight. Sub Knight is going to Special Summon Squeak Knight, and then you're going to go back in for another Azold. We're going to go directly back in for a second Azold, and we're going to see if we can make another Ben K, because we have a bunch of equip spells in the deck. We're going to see if we can get four different ones. One right there, two right there, three, and then we've got four. We've got plenty of equip spells to be able to use in this deck to be able to grab, and we can even use our copy of Golden to like really make this deck insane, because you're going to get a multiple draw off of this effects. We're going to go ahead and send these to grave. Don't forget about your add to hand off your Azold as well. So we're going to get the copy of Neospatian Connector just as an additional play in our hand. Well, I probably would grab the red. Grab the red. If, Like I said, always grab red if you've already got the other one uh, or you've already gone through your two plays. Special summon your Min K on attack position. Flip your copy of the Heritage and then grab from your deck to your hand a copy of your golden because golden will grab off the cursed. Now you activate the heritage and heritage will grab Gallatin to give it an additional thousand if you want to go that route. And then now we have all these insane plays. So here we go. This is what I love about this deck is you can do this. Go ahead and drop bamboo and then go one, two, and three. Let me draw six real quick. Uh, that, that's, that's insane. So we're going to go ahead and go one, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So we go in ahead and drew our six. So now we have all these cards in our hand. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 cards in our hand that we've just added from deck to hand. This is insane. Like really bonkers hand. 
So we're going to go ahead and activate some equip spells to go ahead and start OTKing if I can even hold them. And we're going to go ahead and activate Power of the Guardians. Always activate multiple Power of the Guardians because it'll boost it up a thousand every time it attacks. Go ahead and equip that United We Stand. And don't forget about Clarence because you can pay the 500 and go 500, boost it up by 500, or boost it or pay 500 so it can attack directly. And every time it attacks directly, it's going to inflict, or it's going to gain a thousand attack. And it can attack six times because it gets an additional attack. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then every time you attack, you go one, one, and then it goes up by a thousand. And then you go two, two, where is it? Two, two. And then it just goes from there all the way to the sixth attack where it's going to be gaining 3000 for each one. And the final attack points of this card will be 2100 for the um, United We Stand, and then 6,000 with this will be at 8,100 by the final attack of your copy of your Ben K, which is insane to be able to get that card that big with six attacks. I mean, you're looking at almost 60,000 damage. I mean, you're looking at least 50,000 damage with this card, which is insane. So let's go ahead and see what we can do for another test hand, because like I just showed you guys, it's really insane, especially when you fuse in the golden bamboo sword engine into the deck. And I know Izzy loves the golden bamboo sword engine. Like we talk about that engine a lot and it's just really, really good in warrior decks. And so I wanted to make the deck where you could actually include that. Now as you guys kind of saw the extravagance kind of conflict so if you want to drop it in play, see the only reason I didn't play Desires over it is because the Desires I felt like was going to banish a lot of my combo pieces like my Squeak Nine and my Neospatian Connector and is why I kind of opted into going that route. But if you want to drop it out for like Upstart Goblin, you can and maybe an Into the Void, you can. That's another option if you want to go that route because you do get a lot of pluses in this deck. You can go that route and put those in the deck instead. So... Let's go ahead and see what we can do for another test hand. I don't know if it's going to be going first or going second. We're just going to have, kind of take a look at it and see what we can do. Uh, let's see what we can do. So we're going to go ahead and draw into a copy of United We Stand. Sub Knight, this could be a first or a second hand, a, a copy of Foolish Burial Goods, Mage Power, and a copy of Psychic Blade. This is probably one of the best hands we've gotten so far because you have a lot of different plays. We're going to go ahead and Foolish Burial Goods. To bait the ash, you can bait the ash this way by trying to hit them with a copy of Foolish Burial Goods because they're not going to know what you're playing unless this is game two or three. You can go ahead and drop the Foolish Burial Goods. And if they don't stop it, you can go ahead and grab from your deck a copy of Curse Bamboo Sword, which is going to get you a copy of your regular Bamboo Sword, which is then just going to kind of snowball from there where you're going to get all your plays. If this is first or second, it doesn't really matter. If you were going second, you'd already have a copy of Cursed Bamboo Sword, so you could draw a Golden Bamboo Sword from deck, which would get you another play. It's totally up to you if you want to go that route. If you want to say it was going second, you'd get this and you get an extra two, which essentially would be that. A potentially, but we're going to go ahead and grab a copy of the Bamboo Sword and go ahead and shuffle the deck up. So once we're going to go ahead and shuffle that deck up, we're going to go ahead and normal summon out our copy of Sub Knight. Once you normal summon the Sub Knight, you're going to go ahead and special summon from the, or equip the Squeak Knight, which then will special summon itself. Link again, go to Azold. Azold's effect is going to go off and you're going to go ahead and send a copy of Durandal a copy of Phoenix Blade. Always send these two. I always, for some reason, send these two in case I don't draw into a copy of the Durandal because you can add the copy of your um, other card. Don't forget to get your connector. Send a copy of, say... I guess I would send... I kind of want to keep my Curse Mambo Swords in the deck because I can draw into those. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I, I'd probably send those to Grave. I'd go ahead and send a copy of Cursed and then maybe a copy of Mage Power because we've already got everything we need. So we're going to go ahead and send those to, from deck to grave. And once you send these from deck to grave, you can go ahead and special summon out your copy of your Ben K. Uh, and then once you summon out your Ben K, you're going to get some really, really, really good plays just to have an additional monster. So we've got pretty much we've gone plus one with this hand or plus two with this hand already. And you can go ahead and equip the Psychic Blade, which is going to boost it up to 25. Mage Power, which is going to boost it up by 15 once or 2,000 once you equip with everything. And that's your basically your final board that you're going to be able to equip it with. And if your opponent does out it, you do have a little bit of a problem because you're not going to be able to go anywhere, which is why I say don't do this. Put it in defense mode and let it sit because you have the connector that you can then normal summon the next turn and go for your copy of your next card, which you can then go draw one, Bamboo Sword, and then let's say they board wipe you like we said before and this is turn three 
you can then normal summon out your copy of Connector, and once you summon out your copy of Connector, you can then grab your copy of Aqua Dolphin, wherever he is. Uh, let's see, where's Aqua Dolphin? There's Aqua Dolphin. Aqua Dolphin to your side of the field. You can use Aqua Dolphin's effect if you want to as well, to discard like a Golden Bamboo Sword, or a Cursed Bamboo Sword, and it'll still go off, which is pretty cool too. And then you can link these away, summon out your copy of your Isolde. Isolde will pop off, and you will be able to send some cards to Grave, which is going to help out the deck a lot. To be able to send like maybe, I don't know, let's say this, 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 and I think I have a Mage Power in hand, don't I? Yeah, I already have Mage Power in hand, so I don't really need another one. Go ahead and send the Power of the Guardians, all four of those to the grave, which is why you play two Binkays. You don't want to draw into Binkay because then you just normal summon it. It's like, eh, I can't really get plays off, which is why it's old so important. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make sure that you grab your copy of your Warrior Monster off your old. And then we're going to special summon out the copy of Bin K. Bin K will then get it itself onto your side of the field. You can easily change this out if you want to for a copy of Phoenix Gearfrid. That's another option if you guys want to go that route. I will mention that to you guys as well. But you're going to go ahead and summon out your copy of Armored Samurai. And then your copy of your Golden will add to hand because you sent Cursed. And then we're going to get to draw four, which is pretty good too. So we'll go ahead and let's see what we can do. So we're going to go ahead and drop the copy of this, then draw off the uh, copies of Golden Bamboo Sword. We're going to get a draw four, well I'll draw four, draw two, draw two, and we're going to get Heritage, which is perfect because we're going to get our copy of Clarent. Clarent is very important in this build because you're going to be able to OTK your opponent, use the copy of Clarent, and then immediately just start equipping whatever you want. So I would use these three, which is Mage Power, the copy of the Psychic Blade, and United We Stand, and pay the 2000 with the copy of the Psychic Blade to boost it all the way up to an additional 25, and then this is going to boost it up by 25 more, which is 5,000, and then it's going to go to, I believe, 68 is the total, or 60, 66 is what the total uh, that you're going to be able to attack with, and then you can pay the 500 and swing at your opponent for 66, uh, five, six times in the face, which is great. So that's pretty much it for this build, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Like I said, the only thing that I've considered changing is maybe changing this out for maybe a single copy of the Phoenix Gear Frid, uh, the Immortal Phoenix Gear Frid, but I wanted to make it really budget, and it's not super necessary, but it's an option for you guys if you want to change it out for the Immortal Phoenix Gear Frid because you can special summon it on turn two, and it's kind of a backup play. Um, if you want to go that route, um, it's just something that as I've played the deck, I've kind of picked up and I've kind of like gone here and back and forth with it and it's totally up to you because i like the special summon ability the free special summon that if i draw into that card and my opponent stops me i can special summon that first and then normal summon the copy of sub knight if my opponent does stop me at any point i can just go ahead and summon that behind it uh, where i can do something like this let me show you that really quick before we end like let's say i normal summon this and my opponent or i special summon this and then i normal summon this and my opponent ashes the sub knight or ashes the neospatian connector because i'm trying to equip or special summon off the neospatian connector i still have my two warriors that i can go for as old which is why i play the copy of super red layer um the only reason I've kind of decided to play it over the copy of Immortal Phoenix, but that's totally up to you. So that's it for this one, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely give Izzy some love down in the comments down below because Izzy always comes up with the craziest builds for me to build. Like I, I haven't seen a Ben K build in like 10, 15 years. And, and I've finally picked this up like since goat format. And like, I saw this and I was like, Oh, Wow, this still works, especially with this old. This is insane. So, anyways, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and there you soon come part notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below. And we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.